Hi everybody, it's Diana with StampingWithDi.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's Teach Me Tuesdays episode 127. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to my channel, make sure you say hi and let me know where you're viewing from. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Uh, my Teach Me Tuesdays, they're just fun stamping days. Sometimes I teach something, you know, like a different um, project or a fold or something like that. So today I'm going to do a gift card envelope, you know, thingy. And I did this. I did one like this, oh, I don't know, about six months ago or something like that. And I thought, you know what? It's time to do this again and use some of the new DSP because we have so many gorgeous um, designer series papers in the catalog. So I thought, you know what? That's what I'm going to do for today. So, um, hey, Candy and hey, Lanza. So, um, so um, oh, also, I have one of these left, speaking of DSP. And this is the um, DSP that's in the annual catalog that are the patterns, um, like the, the Abigail, Abigail Cottage, you know, things like that where it's flowers and stuff. Um, this isn't the one that's just the um, in-color collection and the color families where it's the same pattern, you know, just the different colors. Um, this is the one that I showed on my video. So I have one left. And that's only for the United States. So let me know if you're interested. Um, I cut it. Somebody said they wanted it. And then I've not heard back. So, um, yeah. But anyway, so it's 36. And that includes priority postage. So let me know if you're interested. And I can um, get the um, PayPal thing sent off to you. So, hey, Deborah. Oh, my gosh. The cookies were so awesome. So I talked about the the pan banging chocolate chip cookies um, yesterday as I was ending my video and they turned out so awesome, but <clears throat> they're like this big. So you actually only put four on the cookie sheet because they're, they go like that big, you know, and you just cook them for like 10 minutes and then every two minutes till 18 minutes, you open up the oven and you just lift it up and you bang the pan down. And what it does is a normal cookie raises, right? So every time you bang it, it makes it fall and spread. So you go fall, spread, fall, spread. So then you get these, you know, ripples and all that kind of stuff. And the edge is crunchy. And then the center is like moist. So it was so fun. But, you know, I swear it was like two hours worth of doing these cookies. And there was 10. So it's, it's a labor of love. And... um. So, but they are very good. So if you want to try it, just, just Google ban, ban, <laughs> what did I say? Pan banging chocolate chip cookies. Say that five times fast. All right. Um, oh yeah. So Carol, let me know if you try it. All right. So let me um, flip the phone and oh my gosh, what did I do? Hang on a second. Oh, hold on. You're going to have to look at my chest. What did I do? What did I do? Oh, did I put this on our... Hold on a minute. Good grief. I need to adjust this. Heavens! What did I do? Oh, my gosh. Hold on a minute. That's not right. I think I put this on the stand wrong. Heavens! There we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I need to make myself a mark on the stand so that I know which is supposed to be facing me. All right, I'm going to put a post-it note <laughs> right there. This is what's supposed to be facing me, not that other one. All right, so because I told you the other day I had to move it around for the for the Zoom with Stampin' Up. All right, so there we go. It might be crooked. But I'll fix it. At least it's at least it's pointing down. All right. Um, the cookies are called pan, like cookie pan, you know, uh, whatever. Pan banging because you're banging it. Chocolate chip cookies. Um, oh, it would be good with a, a scoop, scoop of vanilla ice cream. So the girl that I got the recipe off the Google, she put them in the 
in the fridge after. So I had them in the fridge. So when I had one earlier, I'm like, well, now it's all crunchy. Like, so then I took them out of the fridge. So I don't think I would store them in the fridge. Like I said, there's only 10 of them. When I got up this morning, there was only four in the fridge because Eric come over and, and took some. So that will teach me to post a picture on Facebook because then Eric sees the picture and he thinks it's it's calling him to come get food. Oh, well. Okay, so let's see. What am I going to do today? So we are going to be using the Amazing Year. And it is such a fun set. It has some amazing writing, um, whatchamacallits, fonts. And it's just, it's so cute with the little um, coloring. And then I'm also going to use Quiet Meadow. Now, this is carried over. So this is in the main catalog now. And this is a fun one, too. Um, it's got um, some great, this is a great one for collaging, right? Because you've got a splatter. You've got some typing here that's kind of um, rubbed off. It's just a fun one. So I chose to use those together. All right. So let me get my pieces here. So this is the paper I decided to use. This is the paper. This is the um, the hostess paper. It's in the back of the catalog. So when you place an order of 150 before tax and shipping, or you know if you get a hostess code from me and a bunch of your friends place orders and it's at least 150, you can get hostess benefits. This is the um, pack of paper and I could not resist it this was perfect for this card because the um the direct the the way the pattern is it doesn't really have an up or a down because I'm going to use the flower side um but you'll see the the stripes as well all right so this is the dimensions that you need so like, make sure you can read that. All right. So this is seven by seven, and this is inches. And then um, you're going to score. So you're going to go over and you're going to score two inches. And then you're going to move it over. And you're going to score five and one quarter inch. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to score one and a quarter inch. And then six and one quarter inch. So that's the measurements. And I just wrote them on a piece of copy paper because I figured it would be easier for you to see. And then this is what you have. So then what you're going to do is we're just going to fold and kind of crease. Now, when you are scoring designer series paper on your Simply Scored, it's a light touch. It's not like you're scoring cardstock because it's very easy to um, actually, you know, with the little um, score tool, you it's easy to cut the paper. So you just want to have a light touch. All right. So there I've got my little, um, you know, doohickeys, my, all my scores done. And that's going to make it easy to see because I'm going to cut away these corners so that's what this meant on the, the measurements because you're going to cut this away you know in these four corners you're going to cut away now this might be a fancy name something but i have no idea so this was one of my mimeograph mondays from last catalog and i just figured it out so I just basically do, did the same thing. And when I rewatched that video, I had a laugh. I wasn't laughing that day, but I had a laugh now. It was um, a day or two after <laughs> I'd cut the tendon in my foot. But when I was doing the video, I didn't know that. I thought I might have just broke my toe. But here I was all this time with a cut tendon. And that's why my toe was all droopy. But now it's all good. So, yeah, it's fun to rewatch some of those old videos. All right, so I'm just cutting these away, and I'm just using the score lines. And we can straighten them up as we go. Now, what you're going to do, this is the bottom. But when you were going to fold them, you just want to kind of give it a little cut like this on an angle. 
And that's going to just help you fold it because we're going to fold these up. And it just helps it from catching. So I'm just giving it a small little trim. I ha I'm sure that angle has a name, but I don't know. All right. Then we're just going to bring this in. Well, that looks good. All right. But this time I want to bring this in so that you don't see that. So I want my this one to be clean on the bottom. The one I did before, I had this be on the outside. I punched a hole in here for the ribbon. So it's the same. This is the same, but we're putting it together differently. All right. So I need my little um, green tip glue that I put in this handy dandy little um, needle nose glue bottle. And you just get these off of Amazon. All right. So I'm just going to fold this up. So this is going to come over and this is going to come over. So I'm just going to give it a squeeze and we're going to put some glue. Come on, glue. Let me give it a squeeze over the garbage peel. I'm bad about closing it and then it dries inside there. All right. So I'm just giving it a little bit of glue. Ooh, that was a lot right there. Hang on a minute. Scoot it, all right? Then we're gonna fold this over so it'll catch. So then I'm gonna put my glue here, just a little strip. And then I'm gonna put glue here. So what it'll do is when I fold this over, it will glue on this side and it will catch it here. So now we've got our cute little envelope already. This is perfect for the gift card, but we're going to decorate this a little bit more. All right, so let me set this aside. I'm also going to use Velcro dots, and these are also off of Amazon. All right, so that looks good. And then I'm just looking inside, and it looks really good, you know, when I glued that, because you just want to make sure that that clears. All right. So then what I did was I stamped these flowers and I stamped them ahead of time so they could have a good good amount of time to dry. And this time I stamped them. Hey, Anna, um, I stamped them with the basic gray. So usually I use the um, memento, but I want these flowers to be a little bit softer because this paper is just so beautiful and so soft. I didn't want like this stark black image. So I stamped them with the basic gray. All right. So then I'm just going to color with the blends. So as long as you let it dry good, you are totally fine. All right. So let's see here. And like I told you, I am so addicted to the new parakeet. So, oh, Mary's here too. Hi, Mary. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color. This is the dark. And it's pretty quick to, to color these. So I'm just putting a little bit of dark on the leaves. But this is winning me over the granny apple. And I kept using granny apple all the time. And now I seem to grab this because the granny apple almost seems too dark and it was the bright green before so it's too funny all right so I'm just putting the dark parakeet party just on the leaves and then I'll do with the light one and then I'm just going to come up and meet that dark So just come back from one side and meet. And that way it will keep that dark line. If you start from here and work over, you're going to get rid of that dark line. And I want to keep it. I want there to be a distinctive light and dark on my leaves. So hopefully my hand isn't in the way. It's hard to... It's hard not to have your hand in the way when the when you're coloring. All right. 
And then, so that looks good. And I'm even going to go back with the dark. Hi, Teresa. Oh, the parakeet. Yes. So amazing. So this is the dark. And I'm just going to hit those leaves one more time. Because I just want to have a little bit of a dark in there. But it's still a parakeet. All right. I also want the tag to be kind of light. So I'm just grabbing Pool Party. And I love Pool Party and the parakeet together. Because I swear that Pool Party looks so different when you put it with the parakeet. Or the parakeet looks different when you put it with pool or whatever. All right. So that was just a dark pool party. And then from this side, I'm just going to pull over with the light. So that looks good. All righty. Then our flowers. I'm going to go light flirty. In the center. So poor Eric. He ha doesn't have much luck with TV. So we've had to give him a TV lesson last night. And he come over. He's like, oh, his TV's not working. And, and the guy that comes in and works with him, our son is autistic. So he has a guy that, that kind of comes during the week, takes him if he has to go to the store or whatever. Because, you know try to get him to have a little bit more independency. All right, so that was the light flirty flamingo. flamingo. Now I'm going to take dark pale papaya. So anyways, Eric TV wasn't working, but when I went over, I was like, "Well, what are all those marks on it?" And I said, "Were you hitting it?" And he was he was like, "No, I wasn't hitting it. There was a bug." And I'm like, well, "What do you mean?" He, so him when you say hit, I think he in his mind, he's like thinking full fist, you know, <laughs> he wasn't doing that. And I'm like, oh, but you don't, you can't even really bang on those flat screen TVs, right? Because it will just mess them up. So I think we finally figured out that that's what he was doing. There was, you know, we get bugs. I mean, everybody gets a fly now and then or whatever. And I think there was just a bug flying on the TV and he was trying to get it, and it wrecked his TV. So they are off at the store. He called me a bit ago. And I said, well, don't call me during my live. All right. So there's our pretty little flowers. And I'm also going to take my gel pen. And now the gel pen is not something that's in the catalog, and I apologize. But you can get them readily available on Amazon. And I'm just going to put a few little dots here and there in that center and it just adds a little bit of fun and um, lightness to it all right so there's our cute little flowers all colored and then I'm just going to trim them out so that we've got a little bit of fussy cutting and then when I did the inside of the card that's when I used the other stamp set so that I didn't have to do any more blending. It was just solid stamping. But those stamp sets went so well together. And I thought, you know what? I don't, I think I had only used one image from the other set. So now I've used two. All right. Because you know I have used the splatter before. That's a given. All right. Let me cut this stuff around here. All right, so we're just going to fussy cut this around. And this is live, so there's no speeding up the video. Did you watch the Saturday one? We did the over the border. That was so fun. So that was pre-taped. So I was able to speed up when I did certain things. But not today. You have to listen to me ramble while I cut. All right. So you see how I'm turning the paper. So you just squeeze the scissors, turn the paper. It's a lot easier than moving your scissor hand 
up and down. So just squeeze and turn. You just kind of have to look ahead so you know like which way you have to turn the paper. But easy peasy. And a good pair of snips, sharp snips helps as well. All right. Almost. Almost. Oh, Teresa, I think I channel Granny when I cut. She was the best paper scissor cutter. She would cut coupons. She would cut magazine articles. She cut so much stuff out of, you know, newspapers. And, you know, you would get a letter from her, not every week, but whenever. And there would be a newspaper article in there. So it was just that. Um, I'm trying to think, not age. When she was born, right? They didn't throw anything away. They used everything. All right. So there we go. So this is going to go on here. And I'm just going to put a couple dimensionals. And then we're going to do a cute little card to go inside. And I'm like looking for my dimensionals here, there. So I'm going to put a dimensional here and here. Because we're going to put a ribbon on here once we get our card inside there. And this glue dot or these dimensionals are still a little, a little finicky. All right, so I'm just going to put these pretty little flowers just on the corner here. All right, so then I have a fun little card. So I just picked colors that went with the DSP. So we have our card, we have our front of our card. So let me get my grid sheet. So I kept the stamping inside the card pretty simple. So I'm doing pool party because we used pool party on the front of the card. So I wanna have some sort of um, purpose why I use certain colors. So if you like um, this, DSP and you go, oh, I'm going to make a bunch of them. Pool party is one of the colors that are in that packet. So if you used all of this DSP up and you chose a different one, then this would still go with it because it would have that pool party in there. All right. So I'm going to just stamp this flower on the side here. And then I'm going to still do the basic gray. And we're going to use the birthday wishes. All right, so let's see how straight it is. So what I do, if I'm not going to use my jig, I just stamp it on the grid sheet. And then I go, hey, that looks pretty straight. Because sometimes I do good for the stickers. Sometimes it's a greeting that it's not as obvious if it's a little crooked, just because this one's got all that writing going on. All right. I also, you know, I have to use the um, splatter. So I'm just going to put a little bit of splatter, not a whole lot, because I don't want it to be just this card of splatter, because you might want to write something. Well, not on the front, but I just don't want it to be totally full of splatter. All right. I also want to put this behind or in front of a piece of pool party because I liked it framed and it's just a very small frame. All right. And that's going to go right here on the front of the card. And this is petal, petal pink cardstock. All right, so that's going to go there. All right, let's see. The inside, let's do the inside. So we're going to put a strip of paper. You know me, you always have to put a strip of paper. Now this time, since this is a small card, usually I do a one-inch strip. This time it's like just half of an inch strip. And we're going to put it on the side here. on this side and this 
you know, goes with the front of the envelope. And this doesn't have to hold a gift card. You know, it could just be a cute little small card, but it does. All right. So then I'm going to take my, where's my gray again? So now we have, you're an entire year more amazing and lovely as ever. Isn't that a cute little saying? All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. See how straight. Oh, again. Good. So I'm going to put that. Right there. I'm also going to put some splatters, just a few. Just on the bottom, a little bit on the top. And then this flower comes with that, um, with this set. So that's where these two came from, the same set. And this one reminds me kind of of these flowers. So I'm just going to go pool party. And I'm just putting it right here. And it's soft enough that you could totally write over that. And you would still see the flower behind. All right. So that's the inside of the card. So isn't this a cute little, little card? It almost reminds me of like a baby slimline, which I don't think it is, but I mean, just because it's kind of got that long, that long look to it. All right. I also have to put some bling. Okay. I can't lose my, whatchamacallits. I don't want to lose these. All right. Let me close that ink pad up. We're done with the ink pads. Close them up. All right, so I'm going to use the polished dots because these have a really, really soft, petally pink color, and I'm too lazy to look in the catalog to see if it really is petal pink. If not, it, it sure goes really good with it. So I'm just going to put a couple and one over here. So we've got a little bit of bling, but not a whole lot because we're going to put this inside our envelope. So now we're going to slide this in our envelope. We would put our gift card in there or whatever. All right. Then we're going to take our little, oh, see, and I have to trim this just a tad. Hold on a minute. Fold that back. And I'm just going to trim, because I told you, you might have to trim just a little bit, but only like just a smidge. It's just where it catches, okay? So now it doesn't catch. So I'm just going to use these um, Velcro thingies. All right, so I'm going to put a Velcro. Let's see, that looks good. That look in the center? I don't know. We'll pretend it's in the center. And I peel that off. I'm going to stick that little Velcro on there. And then we're just going to close that down. So now that's going to let you open and close your little envelope. Then I have, this is this awesome ribbon that I showed you the other day. This is the Petal Pink and it is Soft Polyester Ribbon. It feels like velour. All right. So then we're going to put this on here. And I'm just going to slide it up underneath here. So that's why I only put the dimensionals on the one side of the flower. Because I want this ribbon to go, you know, on, on here like that. All right. So now we're going to tie. I'm going to turn this upside down. All right. So we're just going to tie a bow. And this ribbon, my hands are so dry, I can feel it like catching on my dry skin, which is a little bit more information than you need. All right, so let's see here. Tie, force my tails to go down and show no fear when you're tying a bow. There we go. So there we've got our cute little bow like that. Trim our tail. Where's my scissors? So 
So we've got our cute little card all ready to go with our fun little bow. Isn't that fun? Isn't that so cute? I love it. So here's the one I was looking at. So I I didn't tie the, the um, whatchamacallit, the bow on this one because I was like, oh, if I have to open it. But isn't that fun? So, yeah. So hopefully it's, it's easy enough. Just um, when you watch the video back, you can just pause when it gets to that part. But um, so, yeah, hopefully you'll you'll make one or two. All right. Let me um, let's see if I can do this. There we go. So I can say see you later, alligator. And it's really crooked now. All right. So thank you so much. Well, I adjusted the phone. Oh, gosh. Because I, I, I fold it down because otherwise I'm afraid I'm going to knock it over with that thing across the desk. But um, so, yeah. So hopefully um, you will maybe make one or two of those and let me know what you think. And you can also go this direction. Right. It could have gone that direction, too. You just turn the flower, you know, because this DSP, that's why I picked it, because it doesn't have an up or a down. So you don't have to think too much, you know, in regards when you're like doing your scoring and stuff. You don't have to go, oh, when this four folds, now it's going to be upside down. So you wouldn't want to pick one that has writing or anything like that. But um, so and then if you did do it that way, then you might want to um, stamp your card the other way as well. So when they pull it out. So that's why I did my card standing up, because when they pull it out out then the card is the right direction if you do your card this way then you're going to want to stamp your card so that when they pull it out the flowers and the greeting are this direction that's just me i'm not saying you know that if you don't you know the stamping please is going to knock on your door <laughs> all right so um so thanks sherry all right so i will um get the supply list and i will put it underneath the video and otherwise, I will see you tomorrow for my Watch Out Making Wednesdays, 3 o'clock, Arizona time, same time, same channel. Have a great, oh, I have to get my thing ready. Oh, so professional. I know. Anybody can do what I do. All right. Have a great night, and I will see you tomorrow. All right? Now that I'm trying to find my mouse. All right. There we go. Thanks, everyone.